Welcome to Livid Instruments. Uh, this is where we make all of our products, our controllers, our software engineering, uh, manufacturing. Everything happens here in Austin, Texas. Uh, right now you're in our front office. This is our uh, wall of fame here of the products that we made before we started the company. Um, back in 2003, when the company started, um, I had met Travis, uh, who is my, one of my business partners. I was playing this device in a rock band, uh, Cinch. And this was a MIDI controller I had designed uh, to control audio and video, a uh, real-time editing device. Um, we were on tour with a band named Stone Sour, and Travis, who my partner, went to see that band, and we were opening for them. And he, at the time, he was playing this device, which is a MIDI uh, bass guitar. Uh, he had a shop here in Austin where he made these. Um, a little spot not much bigger than this room. He had a CNC machine and some electronics, and he was making these bass guitars. He saw the stuff I was doing, and we started collaborating. And that was in the early 2000s. Um, and then we started living, and we started making controllers uh, using similar instrument building um, techniques. Uh, but we wanted to make it more accessible, so we started uh, making these console bass controllers. And this is one of the early ones from 2004. Um, it's the tactic. We use very similar uh, kind of instrument building techniques with wood and, and shapes. Um, and that's how we started the company. And these were, our own was our very first uh, commercial product. Um, it was still pretty boutique. It was just uh, two people at the time we were making these. Um, and, and Travis and Peter and myself, the, the, uh, the founders. And this is the Ohm 64, which is our first um, class compliant MIDI device. So this is just the, the kind of show off the products and, and, and how we started and reminds us that we always started with these guitar shaped instruments and, and uh, now we're leading back with our guitar wing back into this uh, but through a different, uh, different form. So uh, this is where everyone comes in. We have all our meetings. Uh, we can go back into the uh, engineering offices. Uh, it's a little quiet around here because the holidays just ended, but this is one of them where uh, this is our uh, Jeff, one of our engineers. He's a software engineer. Um, this is our uh, engineering slash marketing department. Uh, it's still still pretty, uh, you know, we're still pretty small, uh, but we cram a lot of people in a little space. This is our um, development office uh, and account management. Rachel does our account management, and Travis and Mark and uh, John and myself, we do all of the product design, prototyping. A lot of times you'll see different circuit boards and boxes of components uh, sitting around uh, because these guys are developing new products. Um, the guitar wing prototypes, here's the, here's the actual prototype of the guitar wing. Uh, but you see different stages of, of prototyping. It's usually not this neat. Usually this stuff's all over the table. Um, and, uh, and John, who's out today, but uh, he does our uh, board design and firmware. Uh, he's in various stages of prototyping as well. This office always has a lot of ideas and electronics floating around in it. Um, sometimes some cool designs. This is a product we're doing with a clothing company. Uh, just a, a custom model um, of the OM RGB, one of our more popular products. So this is the engineering uh, master uh, mastermind location, uh, but I'll take you guys and show you the, the real stuff, um, how things are made. Going through here, this is our assembly room. This is where everything gets uh, assembled. And uh, as products are done being designed, they come in here and they get uh, manufactured. Uh, here's here's our electronics department here. Uh, we used to uh, do our own circuit board assembly. Now we outsource that because we couldn't keep up with manufacturing. So when we get our uh, boards, they look like this. There's still some components we do place by hand, some through hole stuff. Um, and then of course, uh, a lot of the custom stuff and the builder stuff we do here in house. Um, but this is where all the electronics uh, happens and once the boards come in, they go to this side of the uh, room and they get assembled. Is Casey working on a control R right now and a code at the same time? Uh, two codes, multitasking. 
Uh, Travis is doing some circuit board work over there uh, at the rework station. And Corey's QCing uh, our, our finished controllers. After they get done being built, their quality control are checked. And that is done. How many times during manufacturing are they, are they checked? Maybe Probably five? Four, 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 or five four to five times. Four to five times. Everything's hand built, like you can see here. Um, everything's hand tested. Um, and everything it goes through multiple quality to make sure it both works and looks good because there's a lot of different uh, elements used in our manufacturing, wood and metal and um, powder coating. So you get to really look at each instrument and make sure it passes all the quality before it goes out. Around here on the other side of our uh, uh, main assembly line here, um, this is where all the testing uh, and shipping takes place. Uh, we have um, different stages of assembly, different stages of testing. Uh, we also have our DIY products all get shipped out from here. We do our, our Brand Junior, which is our big, um, our big most popular uh, microcontroller platform for controller building. Um, these are actually made in San Antonio, and then they come here. They go through a bunch of quality tests, and uh, they go up here, and then we ship out different components, jumper wires and potentiometers and arcade buttons. Um, basically, anything to build your own controller would, would come out of here. Um, and then sometimes you'll see some custom controllers being built here. Uh, one for Nicholas Jar went out. Did that go out? Yes. Yeah, that just went out, but um, sometimes you see some contru uh, custom controller construction happening over here. Um, so this is where everything gets finally assembled, put together, tested, and then boxed up to be shipped out to the customer. Through here is where everything is actually manufactured. This is our main uh, manufacturing uh, floor here. You see a lot of machines and, and dust and, and uh, things being cut. It might, might get a little loud while we're out here, but uh, all of our products start out as sheet metal. You can see the sheet metal over there. It's um, eight by 10 foot sheets of aluminum. And uh, what we do is we take that aluminum and we mill it in our milling room. And then we bend it and then we powder coat it. And then it goes inside to be assembled. So every single control that you see starts off as just a big sheet of metal. Uh, gets sectioned off over here in the, um, on, the, on the machines. And then goes into the uh, different areas for manufacturing. Uh, for example, right now there is a uh, piece of metal uh, on the table. It looks like they're going to be cutting uh, a code controller here. Um, you can see after it's done being milled, these are end caps for a base. This is the, the waste that you get. Uh, all the waste is recycled once a week. So nothing actually gets wasted other than this little bit of dust here. Uh, but this is the metal mill. Um, homemade from Livid. We, we make our machines as well. Um, this machine actually cuts all of our metal. It's been in service maybe 10 to 12 hours a day for four years. So it requires a lot of love. And, uh, and uh, here's, here's a code right here that was recently cut out. So you can see the product in its uh, metal state after it's been cut out. This one looks like it had a bit of a defect, which is why it's sitting out here. But if it didn't, it would get bent in the a metal break, and then it would go into a powder coating room. Uh, and then if it needed screen printing, it would be screen printed out here. And then it goes inside for assembly. This is our screen printing area over here where all of our products are screen printed. Uh, a lot of times you'll notice on our products there is no uh, labeling on it. You might just have a logo or uh, the end caps might be screen printed. Uh, it still needs to go through the screen printing process. So all of that happens here as well as branding. If we have a wood end cap, they don't get screen, screen printed, they get branded with an actual branding iron. Um, it's kind of a cool process to watch. So after the products are uh, milled here, they go into our powder coat uh, booth. We have two booths. We, have, we shoot a lot of black, so we get black powder coating in here. Um, and then we do different colors in here. Looks like white is recently being shot in here. It's Christian, does uh, most of our powder coating and screen printing. Um, looks like he just screen printed some base end caps, or powder coated rather. I won't touch them, but 
Here's what they'll look like before they get powder coated. And I'll touch him, he's not here. Here's what they'll look like when they're done. So it's a simple process, but it requires a lot of attention to detail um, and a lot of care. Uh, here's our metal brake where uh, we some of our products are meant. This is kind of a, a manual, a manual brake. Don't use it that much, which is why it's sitting here in the back. Um, this is also the tool room where we keep all our tools. Once a product is powder coated or screen, uh, screen printed, it needs to go into the oven, so everything is baked in here. Um, oven where nothing is right now. It's freshly hot, so that means they must have just powder coated something. Over here we have our uh, metal and uh, rather our plastic and wood CNC. So all the wood end caps or the plastic pieces that go inside of our products um, get milled out on this machine. Uh, right here we have our control R end caps. That just, this is uh, Centra, which is a compressed uh, PVC. Um, these are the end caps that sit inside the control R. And so these will, after they're done getting milled, they get cleaned up and go to screen printing. Uh, but a lot of times you'll see this machine cutting woods. Here's some uh, mahogany that's used in the code as the, uh, the, the back plate for the logo. Uh, we also have exotic woods that we use, uh, wenge. Here's a piece of wenge. You can order a controller with, um, I think, a dozen different uh, species end caps. So you can really get a custom. And the nice thing about when you do that is every piece of wood is going to look different. So here's the next person that orders. Wenge, which is a really nice wood, we'll, we'll get this piece um, before we have to go buy more. So after the wood is cut here, uh, it goes into our spray booth. And our spray booth is really set up like you would spray a traditional guitar or, or a wood instrument. Um, each product that has wood end caps, um, yeah, you can't even see the, oh, they're so wet. You can even see the variation between end caps here. So every product's gonna look a little bit different, but they get about five coats and they get hand sanded in between each coat. So we, we put a real instrument grade finish on it. We even, you know, we select the woods by hand. So we make sure that the woods we select have a nice grain, um, some nice features to them. Uh, so everything looks a little bit different, even though it's the same species. So once these are dried and ready to go, that usually takes a day or two. Um, that will all go inside and get um, assembled into a final product. That's pretty much it for the manufacturing. There's a lot more that goes on. Um, little and, uh, bits and ends that go into making the product. Uh, Bullock over here is countersinking, it looks like. Well, it looks like he's cleaning right now, but uh, it's countersinking, so all the countersinking is done by hand. Um, a lot of the odds and ends are done by hand. Uh, just various sanding different parts to get them to fit. Uh, every controller is built by hand, so there's a little bit of customization, especially when you use something like wood. Um, you know, you have drying uh, differences between different kinds of woods and different species, so parts need to be you know, modified a bit to fit to every product. Um, so as much as we uh, can produce in-house, which is about 50 controllers a week, um, uh, a lot of that is because of all the detail that goes into the product and the fact that you actually have a person putting each, each piece together and fitting to make sure um, you know, every instrument is, is a little bit different. So thanks for checking out our video and seeing how we make products here at Livid Instruments in Austin, Texas. And thanks for watching. It's like cribs. Yeah, <laughs>